something to say. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Charlie. You might know me better as Sci-Fi Fantasy Writer C.E. Dorset, Especially if you're reading my new book, Crucify My Love, which is out on Amazon Kindle paperback and as a podcast. Just search for Mask of the Gods wherever you're listening to my bliss. So, um, hmm. The trailer for Netflix's new series, The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, is out and... I want to talk about it, because reasons. So, yeah. I I have normally, when I've been doing teaser things, been playing the teaser. This one is very visual without many words. So I didn't think it would translate into audio. So you might want to watch it before we talk about it. So, you know, you know what we're talking about. But before we get into all that, if you haven't already, and the app that you're listening to me on allows you to rate this podcast, please do so. That helps me out so much. That tells the algorithm to share the podcast with more people. And the more people that listen, the bigger community we have. And I'd really like to be able to talk about this stuff with a lot of you. Oh my goodness. So, this has been in the works for a very, very, very long time. And I, I I really don't know how to feel about it. Okay, so I guess I should start with a mild disclaimer. Number one, um, I will be doing spoilers for the movie, The Dark Crystal. So if you haven't seen that yet, um, I don't know why. Definitely watch it. I believe it is actually up on Netflix right now. Um, if not, just buy it. Buy it, own it, love it. That's my second disclaimer. Uh, I, I love The Dark Crystal. It's probably my favorite Jim Henson thing. And as such, I kind of know a lot about the world. Especially the way Jim Henson and those who were involved in creating it thought about it. So, yeah. Okay. I also guess I should say preemptively... I will be theorizing a bit about what will probably be happening in this series, which means if I'm right about anything, that is a possible spoiler, I guess. So for all those reasons, if you are a spoiler averse, you have been warned. Okay, let's just get started. Um, I, I, I'm actually going to start at the end. I am really concerned that the series is going to be good. And the reason I'm concerned by that is Disney Plus. I've been nervous ever since I heard that they were doing more Dark Crystal because, oh man, I love me the Dark Crystal. I think there is so much lore there that could be delved into and played with and brought out. But Disney Plus is the... Lovecraftian demon god looming over all of us that we are just waiting for the stars to be right and for it to rise from the depth and consume us all. The reason Disney Plus scares me in regards to this show is the Walt Disney Corporation owns the Henson Corporation. And so with them owning... Disney Plus, and Jim Henson. Like, this is the reason all of the Marvel shows got canceled off of Netflix, because Netflix didn't want to be doing work for Disney since they're going to be making a competitive product. And there have been some rumors that Disney kind of asked for a bunch of money to continue the licenses, which wouldn't surprise me at all. So my biggest concern is that this is going to be a really good show. It's going to be wonderful. Disney, being the dark lord of them all, 
is going to ask for an insane amount of money and Netflix is going to cancel it and then in turn ask for a crazy amount of money for Disney Plus to buy the rights to the show so that they can continue it and Disney won't pay them because pettiness and it's going to be like Katzenberg, Jeff Katzenberg is back at Disney and we're going to lose this series. So I, I feel like I should start with that just because I'm fairly excited about the series. I think the teaser looks amazing, but I think legally this show is in a very precarious place and we'll have to see what happens once Disney plus rises. So bear all that in mind when talking about this stuff, because Oh, Disney, please don't be as evil as you've been. Be less evil, please. Okay. So, some of the stuff that we are seeing in this trailer. One, we get to see the Skeksis. We get to see a lot of the Skeksis. And, oh, I love me a Skeksy. I do. They, they, they're they brilliant critters. Wonderful, wonderful critters that were conceived of. But... One of the things that I think has to be pointed out, though this is just a two-minute teaser for a TV series, so I'm not too concerned about this, but we didn't see the sages at all, and I don't know if they're going to be in the show at all, though I would like to know more about them. I feel like they will either be introduced later in the season or in a second season should the show get that. Just because season one, it looks like we're going to deal a lot with Agra and the Skeksis and their evil, evil plans to turn the Gelflings into life everlasting. Yeah, they're going to be stealing some essences and hopefully that will be as horrific in this series as it was in the original movie because dude that gave me nightmares when i was a kid speaking of nightmares and kids i am a little concerned that they decided to do the puppets again not because i don't love me some puppets i really really do i love me some puppets i think the skexies look amazing they really look so good my my concern is the gelflings even in the original jim henson movie. Everything looked good except for the Gelflings. The Gelflings were their faces were very wooden and did not convey as much emotion as that story required. So one of the things that I was hoping that they would do is use some of the modern technology to improve on that. And it appears that they did not. And I don't know if that's because they thought we would all freak out if the Gelflings had blinking eyes and the ability to actually emote with their faces and didn't look exactly like the ones from the original because I can understand a company being afraid that people freak out about that because, hey, it's the internet and freaking out is what people do. But I, I, I do wish they had done a little bit more to make the faces of the Gelflings be able to show emotion better. And maybe they'll be able to pull that off in the series. And this is, again, just a teaser. So maybe we just didn't see that. Maybe they picked scenes with the more muted, you know, face that we would expect from the original movie so that people would not be freaked out because they saw the Gelflings have emotions on their faces. But I, I am a little concerned, especially telling this story, because this story should be the destruction of the Gelfling kingdom. And it, it should pretty much have a very, fairly downer ending. Um, think the uh, prequel trilogy, if you will. In that we kind of know where this is going to end. This is going to end with only two Gelflings alive in the world eventually. 
because the Skeksis are going to destroy everything. Uh, so I, I do wish they had done something to allow the Gelflings to have that more expressive, those more expressive features. And it's possible that they tried that and it looked weird and then they decided against it. That That's always possible. You know, not having been in the creature shop while they were developing these things. But I don't know. I, I my, my biggest concern with that is I grew up with Muppets. And so, you know, I, I, I was okay with that as a kid, but I'm 42 years old. I don't know how modern day kids are going to deal with puppets like this. So that I think is going to have to wait to be seen. But first impressions, it looks good. It looks really, really good. So not knowing exactly how much they're going to be pulling from the existing dark crystal uva that is out there, I, I'm not sure exactly how much we're going to get to see or how much of that is going to impact the story. I do love that they're bringing Ogre back. Ogre is probably my absolute favorite character in anything ever, like for all time. I have always loved Ogre. And in several things that I have written over the years, tried to develop my own version of Agra. So I'm curious to see where they go with that. She is born from the world. And it looks like we're getting, I don't know if they're going to call it the life tree or the world tree that created the world. See, when Jim Henson and the others came up with the Dark Crystal, they developed this kind of elaborate mythology kind of Tolkien-esque in its depth for where everything came from and how everything came into being. That way, when they were developing the sets, the settings, and the creatures and everything, it looked like it worked. You know, it looked like it belonged together because they had a, a, an idea of where everything came from. Ogre was born out of the world and was there to see and to understand what all is going on. And so giving her this ability and seeing her actually playing around with her abilities to see the future and understand what's going on, we do apparently get to see a Gelfling deal with whatever they're going to call it, the life tree or the world tree. Um, that is exciting. Getting to see them really go into the war aspects we do get to see gulflings it's very quick but we see gulflings in armor in the trailer so that should be fun <laughs> to see how they pull off a gulfling war because this is going to be all out war i don't i hope they have a firm idea of exactly the story that they want to tell and that that story has a definite beginning, middle, and end. And they're not approaching it in a slapdash fashion. Just because the a show like this really has the potential to get off the rails. And really feel stretched out if they're not careful. Because knowing that it is a prequel, knowing that we are dealing with exactly how the Gelflings were destroyed and they may have by naming it age of resistance they may actually have it end at some point when the Gelflings were actually winning over the Skeksis some point of Pyrrhic victory that will eventually of course collapse and you know we will end up where we were in the movie but at least then you have a happy ending. I, I have a feeling that this is going to end kind of like the prequel trilogy did, where we're going to see the um, children going to their various places for of safety and giving that hope that maybe someday things can be made right. 
I I hope I'm wrong about that. (laughs) I really do. Because there's so much that they could do in this world and in this setting. And depending on how far in the past they're wanting to tell the story and how long they want it to go, we really could dig into this wonderful world and play it for all that it's worth. And especially with the imagination that should be operating within the Jim Henson Creature Shop, there are so many ways that they could take the series and so oh, just so many things that they could do that hopefully its predictability will be slim. Yeah, you know, we know at least a couple characters that have to survive because they, you know, and their and their, you know, Agra will survive. The Skeksis that appear in the movie will survive. Most of the other characters, we get to put wonderful question marks over their head. And that includes, hopefully, most of the Skeksis we'll be spending our time with, where we don't know if they will make it to the end. And I think that would work really well if they did that with the Sages as well. That we met Sages other than the ones that we knew in the movie, so that we had that question mark over them. As with any kind of prequel series the biggest risk that they're facing is not tying it to the original story too much. Like, I don't want this to be the story of where Jen came from. That, that really can't be the story that they tell because I, I don't care enough about that story. Like that can play a part in the series and, be a small minor aspect of it but when you have a series where the stakes are known you have to be very careful in how you tell that story so that it doesn't become boring and since we know that the Gelflings will eventually lose this war and that the Skeksis will eventually wipe them out and we know that the Skeksis and the sages are one in the same on a one-to-one basis. If you kill a sage, the corresponding Skeksy dies. If the corresponding Skeksy dies, if, the, if a Skeksy dies, the cor- corresponding sage dies as well. We know all that from the movie. So those can't be plot points in the movie. I'm sorry, in the series. The other thing is, you can't just rely on nostalgia. Like, I saw the Swamp Walkers, and I'm very excited about that. You need to include new creatures as well. Make this world feel huge and expansive and lived in. Because we get the hint that there are other races in this world. And we get the, the hints of all the other kinds of peoples and whatnot that populate the the world in the movies. In the movie. Because there's only one movie. I don't care what anybody says. But if it's just a cheap nostalgia play, if it's just showing us the things, hey, remember that? Wasn't that cool? Hey, remember that? Wasn't that cool? Hey, remember that? We know how the crystal got shattered. We know how the world came into being, though a lot of that, I think, was more of that was in the surrounding materials, so they could put some of that into the story. But if they're smart, they've spent their time crafting an original tale that is not solely going to revolve around the fight with the Skeksis, just because we know that they cannot win. And even if they're telling a story about this brilliant time at the beginning where they were able to hold off the Skeksis so the series can have happy ending, it needs to have the proper bittersweet note because we know eventually they will fall, they will lose. There there are a lot of moving parts that have to work out just right for the series to work. The puppetry has to be perfect 
the storytelling has to be great, but oh man, does it look good. So hopefully they, they've, you know, dotted their I's and crossed their T's and really have a strong and good concept for what they want to do with this series. I, I want to have faith in them. I really do. But, you know, given everything that's been going on with the sequels and prequels and spinoffs and whatnot, eh, we'll see. I, I am currently optimistically excited. But I would love to know what you think. I would really love to know what you think. So you can either hit me up on Twitter. I'm C.E. Dorset on Twitter and Instagram. You can also go down to the show notes or over to the show notes or wherever the show notes are in the app that you're listening to me on and click the voice message button. Keep it clean so I can use it on the show. Please let me know what you think of the teaser for Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. I want this to be so good. You have no idea. But there's much fear in me. Because once you walk down the dark path, forever will it haunt your destiny. While you're in the show notes. <laughs> Terrible transition. While you're down in the show notes, if you got a buck you can throw my way, you click that community support button, link, text. You can help me out. As little as a dollar a month, you can join the project. And that money really does go a long way to help me do everything that I do. So I don't have to rely on the spotty and occasional ads that we have for the show to make money. By the end of June, all of my work is coming off of Kindle Unlimited. And I'm going to be relying on the love and support of y'all to make all this happen. So, oh, much fear. So thank you to everybody who does that. Um, if you don't have any money right now, that's fine. Totally understand that. But if you know anybody that you think would like this podcast, please share it with them. That helps out a lot, too. Yeah, I think that's it. If there's anything specific in the Dark Crystal that you would like me to talk about, I kind of want to do more episodes about it. I just don't know specifically what I want to talk about. So if you have any ideas, please share them with me because then I'll be talking about stuff that you definitely want to hear and not just my own weird fascinations. Until next time, don't forget, have the fun. Bye.